Now, still made the field goal, but he is a, he is an interesting guy now, Sean. I mean, <laughs> singing and dancing and jumping around and kickers are all a little bit different, but uh, yeah. he fits that mold for sure. Well, there's a Daytona Beach now. He booms that one to the end zone, and they're going to try to run this one out. John Capel, one of the fastest men in the country as a track athlete, a good decision. Brought it out to the 26-yard line. Michael Hamilton made the stop. Here's Ed Cunningham. You guys are talking about Sebastian Janikowski coming from Poland. He's already said he's about 90% sure he'll go to the NFL after this year. The biggest reason, his mother, Helena, is still in Poland. He wants to have the opportunity to bring her over here. And, Todd, you talked about him getting in the snapper's face. At 260 pounds, he's big enough to do that. <laughs> he is a funny guy. First college football game he ever saw was when he took his recruiting visit to Florida State. Bobby Bowden normally doesn't like to give scholarships to kickers, but he watched one film on the guy and said, go sign this kid. There's talk he could be a first-round draft choice. He comes out, a rarity among kickers, Bo Carroll, out to the 32-yard line. Doug Johnson took the first snap of this Florida possession. And the junior from Norristown, Pennsylvania, Carroll, with a good gain on the play. Here comes Palmer, back in. Chris Wanky certainly having the better of it today. He really looks poised and comfortable running the Seminole offense. And Steve Spurrier still trying to find out which one of his quarterbacks is going to give him the best chance to win. Palmer handoff to Karen again. He's short of the first down of the 34. He'll need about a yard and a half on third down. Bradley Jennings made the tackle. Mentioned that Florida State had to run enough to keep the defense honest. Florida has to do the same thing. Last year in this ball game, 20 carries, only 17 yards rushing. It's tough to beat anybody when you become one-dimensional. And Florida this year has done a much better job running the football. They made that a priority to try to fix this year, and they've done it all season. Moved up 62 spots in the rankings. Moving, and there is a flag down. Ernest Graham appeared to pick up the first down. They'll take the penalty if it is offside against Florida State. Because the five yards would be better than what they got on that run. Corey Simon might have been offside. So, on the defense, five yards, first down. Whenever a guy this close to the football jumps off sides, it's because he's not watching the ball. He's listening to the quarterback's voice. Good job by Doug Johnson drawing Simon off sides with the hard snap count. The team that has rushed for the most yardage in this rivalry has won all but one game. Florida won in 95, despite being outrushed by Florida State. Jesse Palmer, the quarterback. And he powered ahead for a couple. Out to the 41, it'll be second and eight. Derek Gibson up from the rover position to make the hit. Derek's a junior from Miami. Second year starter at Rover, and according to Mickey Andrews, he's played as yeah. well, if not better, than anybody in their secondary this year. And their secondary, I don't know if it is as good of a secondary as what they've had in the last couple of years, but that guy, Gibson, has played extremely well from his strong safety position. Doug Johnson, the rush well picked up with the pass, almost intercepted by Brian Allen. Well, earlier, Johnson. Threw an interception, now a skirmish. And he's very lucky that that one wasn't an INT. Roland Seymour and Kenyatta Walker whooping. We are happy to tell you that for the first time in a few years, these two teams did not have an ugly pregame episode on the field. There were extra security coaches and officials during the warm-ups to make sure that they didn't have a fight. Takamato, assistant coach, on the field, and Corral and Seymour. Both coaching staff spent a lot of time in the days leading up yeah. to this game talking about knocking that kind of stuff off. Coaches making public service announcements and doing different things in practice. The end of Thursday's practice was about 15 minutes of the whole pregame routine where they were going to go on the field to try to avoid any incidents.
As you might expect, Teller and I don't see eye to eye on investing. I like to avoid risk. Down at eight. Going to one out of four on third down. That pass thrown by Jesse Palmer incomplete. Mario Edwards nearest to it. Now a flag thrown. You wonder if that's for that little demonstration by Edwards after the play was over. Late flag, but still, Travis Taylor, I mean, he just doesn't seem like he has his head in the game completely, Sean. He has got to play well for this offense. Pass interference on the defense. Wow. Spot ball. Touchdown. Well, Edwards apparently flagged for pass interference, and that keeps the drive alive for Florida. The ball out to the 49-yard line and a first down for the Gators. I think Steve has to find a way to get number 19 the football. Just get him the ball quick and, and let him get involved in the game. You see Travis Taylor trying to get back inside, and there's a lot of contact, but you don't see Taylor fighting through to get to the football either. The official is very late throwing that flag. But there was some contact. Johnson running out of time. Throws it away. Near Alex Willis. Jamal Reynolds has been putting heat on both quarterbacks. And he was in pursuit of Johnson again. You know, a couple plays ago, we talked about decision-making from the quarterback. This play, this is a two-man route, and the read goes one, two. Doug Johnson has to look downfield, and if he can't throw the hook, he's got to dump it to his back. There's double coverage on the hook. There's nobody on the running back. It's just a case of not making the right decision by Doug Johnson, feeling like he has to make the play down the field. And a flinch on the right end of the offensive line. Apparently the tight end reset. Bo Carroll gets nothing on second and ten. No game. Stacked up by Chris Woods, a reserve defensive lineman. And Brian Allen. And time now to answer our Affleck trivia question. The two teams have gone wire to wire. Preseason number one for the national championship in the AP poll. Nebraska in 71, USC in 72. So it's been a while since it happened. Bobby Bob's never had an undefeated season. And that might be what it takes. And both of his sons have. And two of his sons. Yes. Terry and Tommy. Terry at Auburn. Tommy at Tulane. That pass caught by Carroll, but short of the first down by about three yards. Bobby Rhodes made the tackle. Johnson was the quarterback on that play. And another decision for Steve Spurrier. This time the punting unit will come on with the ball at the Florida State 44-yard line. You know, everybody asks, has Steve Spurrier been sandbagging on offense? I don't think so. I mean, one sure sign things aren't perfect offensively. His field goal kicker is fourth in the nation. His punter got the game ball after the game in South Carolina last week. That is very unspurrier-like offensively. And Ryan will try to do it again inside the 20 with Reggie Durden back deep. At the two. So Ryan might be looking at another game ball. Then as Gooch was down closest to the ball to down it, but he didn't need to. Of course, Gooch was once a running back at Florida State. Transferred to Florida in January of 98. And uh, that is the college football version of going from the Hatfields to the McCoys <laughs> or vice versa. One of the leading tacklers on special teams has nine special teams tackles. Gooch had an off the field episode that was very distressing before the season started when he was carjacked by two armed men. Mm. Chris Winky and the Seminole started their own two. And get back to the two with the run by Miter. Here's Michelle. Well, you guys were talking about Steve Spurrier questioning his offense a little bit. He's even questioned himself this season. He recently turned to tight ends coach and special teams coordinator Lawson Holland and asked, am I coaching as hard as I used to? Holland said, coach, you're coaching harder this year. So Spurrier's been perplexed about the fact that his team isn't giving him the results that they normally do. Back to you. I thought the pregame show brought out a great point in the quote that he made. The defenses are a lot better. It's not as easy anymore. Ranky did just get rid of it to Marvin Minnis for a gain of perhaps one. Andre Davis made the tackle. Ranky under pressure and looking at a safety if he didn't get that one off. The one thing you have to avoid if you're Florida State, a penalty with your quarterback in the end zone would be an automatic safety. Wanky can't hold the football very long here. Does a nice job getting rid of it. Big third down play for the Gators. 
Each team with one timeout left in the half. Under two and a half minutes left. Third down and nine. They blitz. Winky going deep for Warwick, and it is incomplete. Benny Alexander had excellent coverage. And Florida should get excellent field position after the first punt of the game for the Seminole. Sean, excellent play by Benny Alexander. He knew right where the sideline was. He knew right where Peter Warwick was, and he pinned him on the sideline. You use that sideline as an extra defender, and you don't let Warwick have a chance to come back into the football. Keith Cottrell is the punter. Junior from Orlando, right against the back line of the end zone. Bo Carroll standing at the Florida State 45, waiting for the punt. Good punt. Very good. Drives Carroll back to his own 45. And outstanding coverage by Reggie Durden. A 52-yard punt. Minus one on the return. You talked about third downs at the top of the telecast of the key. You talked about special teams play. And there's a huge special teams play. Well, we saw a great one by Florida's punter Alan Ryan. Now a great punt by Cottrell. And then even better coverage by Durden on a very dangerous return man. Excellent special teams work by the Seminoles. And still decent field position for the Gators, but they were hoping to do better than their own 44. 203 left in the half. Durden late coming on in defense. The Gators about to line up with five wide receivers. Doug Johnson, the quarterback. John Capel shifts into the backfield. He's a world-class sprinter. Breaks a tackle. Near a first down, about a yard short of it. And the clock runs under two minutes. And the ball at the 47 yard line coming up at halftime. The AXA halftime report. Tim and Spencer will have all the scores and highlights on the AXA halftime report. Each team with one timeout left here in the first half. Gators want to try to conserve that timeout as long as they can here. Wonder what time and issue if they'll stick with the rotation. Bad pass by Johnson going down the seam for Travis Taylor. Reggie Dern had the coverage. And now that the clock stops, they can change the quarterback if they so desire. And Palmer will come in on third down in a long yard, almost two. Well, I made the point earlier, Sean, that when the one negative potentially with this alternating quarterbacks is when you're in, you feel like you've got to make the big play. It's your time to make the big play. And you maybe don't always take what the defense will give you. Pitch to Carroll. He has the first down. We'll stop the clock for a moment to move the chains. And here's another skirmish. Same guy, Kenyatta Walker again. He's got to keep his head. He's already involved in one. You know, when you get involved in one of those referees, they get that little notepad out and write your number down. So, so they, they're paying extra attention to Kenyatta right now. They line the clock. First and ten at the Florida State 45. Gators down by 10. Johnson, the quarterback. Bo Carroll, the tailback. All kinds of time. And the pass thrown away. Taylor was well covered. You've mentioned a couple times they need a big day from Travis Taylor. He seems to be as healthy as he's been since he injured his ankle in the Tennessee game. But they haven't found many ways to get him the ball so far today. No, they haven't. And this is the defense that really created some problems for Florida last year. They only rushed three, and they dropped eight. It's a zone coverage. Eight guys back in coverage. Nowhere to go with the football down the field. Doug Johnson just threw that one away. They got away with playing a lot of that defense last year because they were able to stop the run with this defense as well. Palmer back in. Again, the three-man rush. And the pass is by Darrell Jackson at the 28-yard line. First down. 12 yards on the game. Jackson at six straight 100-yard receiving games earlier in the year to tie the Florida record set by Carlos Alvarez. Well, so credit those five guys up front for the Florida Gators. Look how long this pattern took to develop. Jackson came all the way across the field and caught the crossing route on the other sideline. Great job of pass protecting for Jesse Palmer on that play. Another first down catch for Jackson. More than 70% of his receptions have gone for a first down. Johnson, the quarterback. There are 30 seconds left in the half. Johnson after the pump kick. 
Incomplete. Graham was open. Would have been a short game. Maybe in this situation, talk yeah. better that he dropped it. Yep, you're because exactly right. They were going to have to use their timeout. Graham was going to be tackled in the middle of the field. Well, Jamal Reynolds was right there to make the stop immediately. And you're right. It is a good thing for Florida that Graham dropped that football. Johnson seems a little shaky. Yeah, that quarterback. He, he's got a little happy feet. He's not looking comfortable right now, setting and throwing the football. Of the two, Jesse Palmer has looked a little better here in the first half. Palmer in on a snap. Rest from the pocket. 25 seconds left in the half. It's up for grabs and incomplete. Intended for Travis Taylor, Derek Gibson knocked it away. You know what? I, I don't want to sound like I'm picking on Travis Taylor because he has battled the injury, but I don't see him really fighting to get the football. I mean, he's got to play aggressively. He's got to go hard and fight for the football, and I just have not seen it in him in the first half today. I think Palmer was looking for a little more from Taylor as well. Now sometimes when you got receivers like this, you throw the ball up and you let them make plays. And, and Travis has not been able to come up with that play so far today. Third down and ten. Johnson has his pass batted down. Brian Allen got a hand on it. Here comes Jeff Chandler to try a field goal with 18 seconds left in the half. Well, if he kicks it like he kicked that last one, he's got a good shot here because he nailed that last kick. A 50-yarder, the longest of his career. He's had a terrific season. Now 19 of 22 in field goals. Telecommunications major, junior, from Jacksonville. On a walk-on, earned a scholarship. This will be a 45-yard try to Billy Young's hole. That one's long enough. And that one's good. Great kick. And the score is now 13 to 6 in favor of FSU. So what you're saying is the state in Florida, the number one Seminoles, twice led by 10 points, twice had the lead trimmed to seven by a Jeff Chandler field goal. And with 13 seconds left in the half, Chandler will kick off. Gardner and Reggie Durden are waiting for the kickoff. Chandler's pumped up. <laughs> Two long field goals and a booming kickoff about six yards deep. Down by Durden. Well, Alex Brown has played his best games this year for Florida in the big games, but not so today. Yeah, fans of the Gators wondering where he's been. Early in the game, they drew him off sides, maybe took a little out of him. This takes it out of a guy, too. The little chip block by Kendra. And then when they've gone one-on-one, -on -one, he hasn't been able to beat the offensive tackles, in this case, Brett Williams. You see what Alex Brown has done in the big games, but so far, Florida State has done a very nice job of making him very quiet in this first half. No sacks and no pressure. Some say his effort level changes. Even the coaches say that. But Alex Brown's explanation is that the better teams think they can block him with one man with a good tackle so he can win the one-on-one -on -one battle. So the lesser teams double team me that's why I haven't been as productive well, I that's think his some, story sticking yeah. with him <laughs> I think sometimes his motor doesn't run quite high enough from play to play the way you have to be to be a great player and Alex Brown needs to crank it up here in the second half here's Michelle with coach Spurrier well coach your offense has had some trouble moving the ball up the field I mean any yeah. thoughts about sticking with one quarterback oh. Florida will kick off Jeff Chandler puts his right foot to the ball Couple yards into the end zone, it's Reggie Dirt. And he's stopped shy of the 20 yard line. Excellent coverage by the inspired Gators. And we heard Steve Spurrier say to Michelle Tafoya, they're only down seven. And the way the half went, you watch the game, you think they are kind of fortunate to only be down seven, particularly early. It looked like Florida State had an edge. Yeah, it looked like they really had the defense off balance. And let's revisit the keys to the game before the game. Offensive line play has been even in that first half. Third down conversions and edge to Florida State, particularly the first scoring drive. They were three for three. Special teams even. Yards after contact, a slight edge for Florida State. The receivers made more plays in that first half than Florida did. On the 18, after the nice special teams played by Demetrius Lewis of Florida, Winky in the flat to Warren. He breaks a tackle. He's still behind the line of scrimmage. Marquand Manuel runs him down from behind for a loss of three back to the 15. 
Manuel missed him the first time, yep. but managed to catch up to Peter Ward. He was a hard man to catch in the first half. Well, he is so elusive. He has the ability to stop and start on the dime, as evidenced by this play. Coming all the way back across the field for the touchdown, the only touchdown of the ball game. Oinke throws short, caught again by Ward. Out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Chased out by Daryl Dixon. It'll be third down and four. Now look at the halftime statistics. Neither team rushed the ball with success. No, and the one thing right here is that Florida made up about three minutes in time of possession in the second quarter. They were really getting dominated in that category in the first quarter, made up for it in the second. Again, Florida stayed over the ball quickly, and Florida looked a bit confused on defense, and that pass is broken up. Benny Alexander made the quick move on Warg. Winky eyeing Warg on every play. Florida defensive coaches in animated conversation, probably about the confusion of their players at the line of scrimmage prior to this play. Good opening possession for the Gator defense. Alexander with the play here, but the tempo was set by Marquand Manuel's play on first down. Just a great effort play on Peter Warwick. Set the tone for that series for the Gators. He caught for the punt. The punter for the third straight year. 42 yards per punt, and better than that in this game. 42 yards for the season coming in. He might have outkicked the coverage. Bo Carroll with an iffy return, a flag down. Reggie Durden made the tackle. He's been a presence on special teams. A 51-yard punt, a 15-yard return, and a flag in the area where you'd expect an illegal block yeah. against the return team. Yeah, I think Jamal Reynolds got blocked in the back on this play. Block in the back on the receiving team during the return. Ten yards, spot of the foul, first down. Right here you go. Yep. There's the block. There's Derek Corker with the illegal block for Florida. Live above Ben Hill Griffin Stadium today, the Bud One airship providing beautiful aerial shots of Gainesville in today's game. Well, that's a field position changer. They're back at the 28-yard line with Doug Johnson taking the first snap of the second hand. Play action fake to Ernest Graham. Deep down in the lane, caught for first down. They established Travis Taylor right away. And that was a much more confident-looking throw from Johnson what we saw in the first half, a gain of 16. Sean, he's just too good of a football player to not get him involved in what you're doing. He had one catch for nine yards in the first half. Go right to him to start the second half. Get him involved in the game. Get his confidence up. Get his dauber up a little bit. Good way to start for Travis Taylor. Second catch for Taylor. Predominantly pass plays with Johnson. Palmer in there now. Curtis Graham banged ahead to the 48-yard line and picked up the ball, almost four. What happened to your uh, alma mater today? Mm. They're still they're still reeling from the Minnesota game. They have not recovered from a couple weeks ago. Michigan State's pretty good football. Team. Yes, they are playing for a lot today. There's a, a major bowl switch going on there as the winner or loser of that game. Johnson at the helm. Steve Spurrier told Michelle he wasn't going to settle on one quarterback here in the second half because both have struggled. Taylor had the pass sail over his head. Mario Edwards had the coverage. When you're a player like Corey Simon, you're going to get a lot of attention. This time, Cheston Blackshear has got a little help from his center, Yarbrough, who's there just in case he gets beat. Corey Simon attracts a lot of attention on the inside of the offensive line. He's a guy who has played through injuries all season. Mm. Really played through his whole career. That's right. Now one of the four finalists for the Lombardi Award is the nation's top lineman. Palmer on third down. Throw, sliding catch made by Kirk Wells. There's a flag now back at the line of scrimmage, actually behind the line of scrimmage. The Gators have been throwing to the, and the play will come back, have been throwing to the tight ends much more often the last few weeks. Wells a frequent target today, but that reception will be negated by the holding call. 
good effort. I think Mike Pearson, the left tackle, is the guy who got caught with the holding penalty. Wells just 216 pounds. One of the reasons he hasn't played as much as he ordinarily would. He has a problem most of us would like to have. He can't put on weight. <laughs> he eats and eats and eats, and he's yeah. in the weight room, and he just can't put on weight. Oh, he's not quite fast enough to be a wide receiver, so he has to play tight end, and uh, it's tough to play tight end at that size. Take a look. In the second half on third downs, Florida has been abysmal. Florida State's defense has been outstanding. Have not allowed a conversion in the last three games. That's Clemson, Virginia, and Maryland sack of Johnson the first of the day for Jamal Reynolds his team leading seventh sack of the season he drew the holding penalty the last play this time he got around Pearson and made the sack here he is right here working on Pearson Jamal coming with the speed rush and Pearson trouble getting out of his stance he got called for the holding maybe a little tentative and Reynolds went right around him Reynolds a junior from Aiken South Carolina here's Alan Ryan to punt Reggie Durden was back for the punt. And now there's a stop in the action and a timeout called by the Seminoles. 12.02 remaining in the third quarter in Gainesville. It's Florida State 13 and Florida 6. Why do I have Aflac and... did a great job of hustling down the field and beating this man but he's just got to pull off when he knows that Warwick hasn't made the catch he's got to pull off and not try to get so close it's a good job of coverage but just a bad decision at the end by Goose. so Florida State begins at its own 29 after a fast start for the FSU offense they've been less productive of late Travis Miner trying to turn that back around. And he gets ridden out of bounds by Marquand Manuel. 12 yard gain for Miner, number five in Florida State history now among their all time leading rushers in his third season as the starting tailback in Tallahassee. And again, you see the cutting ability of Travis Miner. Nothing there inside, one quick plant foot, and then the speed to get to the outside. Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, says Dunn's one of the best tackle breakers they've ever had. Winky stripped of the ball. It is loose. Alex Brown pulled the ball out, but it looks like the Knowles got it back, and they did. At the 32-yard line. So finally, the presence yeah. of Alex Brown is made known. And he did his thing, Sean. He timed the snap count. He got a great jump. Watch him. He got a great jump working on Williams and got right around him because he anticipated the snap count and got his hand on the football. When he gets around the quarterback, he's going to make a play. I mean, he just has done that all season. He's just had trouble getting to the quarterback today. Second and 19, single season sack record at Florida now for Alex Brown with that sack, 13 for the year. The passing the mark put up by Huey Richardson. Wanky's throw, incomplete. Dugans was streaking down the sideline. And Winky thought he was going to turn back to the ball. Let's check in with Michelle Tafoya. Well, guys, Florida defensive coordinator John Hogue told me at halftime that outside of the penalties that allowed Florida State's touchdown, his team has played just fine. He wants them to relax a little and make plays. He said you can't let interceptions bounce out of your hands. Sean? Yeah, we saw Keith Kelsey have one in his hands in that first half. And Chris Wanky, when he's pressured, he will throw some in the area of the defense, and you've got to make plays. Wanky, all day to throw, going deep, and it is over the head of Peter Warwick. They have two defenders in the neighborhood, Benny Alexander and Daryl Dixon. John Hoke's defense saluted by the sellout crowd in Gainesville. Nice job by the young safety Dixon coming over the top to help his corner. He's reading the eyes of the quarterback. He's watching where Wanky wants to go with the football. And then he's breaking over the top to help the corner. Every time these two teams have met in the 90s, they've both been ranked in the top 10. Well, that's the case again today with this matchup of one versus three. Keith Cockrell, another moving punt. Low Carroll signal for a fair catch. A signal that apparently was missed by Malcolm Tatum. 52-yard punt. No flag on the play. 
And the Gators will begin at their own 16 yard line trailing by a touchdown. 10 42 left in the third. I'm an American soldier. He's sponsored by Gateway. Florida down by a touchdown. The Gators started their own 16. Doug Johnson going deep and a diving catch made by Taylor. All the way to the 42 yard line. 27 yards on the completion. Mario Edwards and Derek Gibson in the vicinity. And a great catch made by Taylor, the junior from Jacksonville. The ankle looks better, and the mindset looks better for Travis Taylor. Beautiful throw by Doug Johnson. Great concentration by Taylor at the end of the play. And again, he is one of the playmakers, a difference maker for this Gator offense. He's got to be involved in the second half if Florida wants to win. Jesse Palmer fakes the reverse, throws it in the flat. And save the touchdown. A gain of 39 on the completion. Palmer to one of the best track men in college track and field, the great sprinter Bo Carroll. Well, Carroll came from out of the backfield. He's going to go inside here and kind of get lost after the play action fake. Florida State concerned with the wide receivers. They're concerned with the fake of the reverse. And Carroll slips out against the linebacker. Wide open against Bradley Jennings and then uses his speed at the end of the play. Nice play call by Steve Spurrier. Carroll eight times a track and field All-American. Ernest Graham threw a huge hole inside the five and stopped at the one. Gibson saved the touchdown again. 19 yards back to that big plays a rarity these days for the Gators. Nice blocking on the left side. The tight end, the guard, and the tackle. Watch him set for pass. They run the little draw. Nice block by Cooper Carlisle, the guard, number 70. And then the power at the end of the play by Ernest Graham. Breaking tackles, protecting the football, fighting for the end zone. First and goal at the one. Palmer, the quarterback. He keeps. Flag down. And apparently Palmer did not get in. Flag thrown along the line of scrimmage just as the ball was snapped. Or you would expect either an offside or an illegal procedure. My guess would be Florida State lined up in the neutral zone, offsides against the Seminoles because it was not blown dead. Illegal oh. procedure. On the offense. Only six men on the line. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, a moment ago in the Florida coaches booth. This was the reaction. Noah Brindice, Buddy Tevens, the running back coach with the headset half on his head. Buddy, the former coach at Tulane, deserves a lot of credit for bringing in that talent that did so well under Tommy Bowden. Now Ed Cunningham made the point about Bobby Bowden's memory of being on the goal line on the one yard line and mm -hmm. having the penalty. Could be a similar situation for Steve Spurrier here in the swamp. Costly penalty there on the one. And the tenth penalty against the Gators. They've been penalized for 60 yards. First and goal from the six. Approaching nine minutes left in the third. Johnson throwing a fade incomplete. Looking for Daryl Jackson. Mario Edwards had the coverage. Jesse Palmer will return. He's the son of a football player. His dad, Bill, played in the Canadian Football League in the 1970s, a linebacker. They're a little bit better this year in the red zone, scoring a touchdown 57% of the time than they were last year when they had an abysmal 44 percentage. Palmer throwing the fade again for Jackson. Broken up and flags thrown on Mario Edwards. So that'll get him back to first and goal if it is, in fact, against Edwards, as it appeared to be. Steve is one of the only coaches that you're going to see in America that will call the same play two times in a row. Every other coach says, oh, no, we can't do that. You can't repeat yourself. He says, this is a good play. We didn't hit it the last time. Go right back to it, Jesse. On the defense, we have an ineligible receiver downfield on the well, offense. Clearly a penalty. The penalties are set. Replay second down. 
There was an illegal man downfield. I think it was Cheston Blackshear, the right guard for Florida. There was a discussion between Palmer and Blackshear after the play. And obviously a miscommunication on the play. So it's going to be second and goal from the five. No, it was the center. It was the center. Yarborough right here, downfield blocking in the end zone on the fade route. Johnson, the quarterback. Three wide receivers. Graham, the back. Second and goal from the five. Johnson under duress, threw it away at the feet of Travis Taylor. Then Thomas had the coverage. Well, Doug knows he's going to get pressure, but he's got to go ahead and try to set his feet and make a good throw. Very difficult to make that throw in the quick slant when you're backing up. And a lot of confusion on the Florida sideline. I believe they're going to use a timeout. With third and goal upcoming from the five, and boy, right now that yeah. procedure penalty on first and goal on the one really jumps out. And a good timeout, I think. They need to have their best play called right here, and they need to all be on the same page. A critical third down play for the Gators. Each team has used one timeout here in the second half. It's still Florida State by seven. Heisman favorite, but Thomas Jones of Virginia is nipping at his heels. Yeah, TJ had a pretty good day today. 28 carries for 91 yards. He set the ACC all-time rushing mark, but I think Ron Dane has got this thing locked up. Otherwise, this would be a great opportunity as Wisconsin finished this thing out early, so you got a couple of weeks for guys to play catch-up. And for more information on the Suzuki Heisman Watch, log on to cbs.sportsline.com. Third down and goal. From just outside the five, Jesse Palmer at quarterback. Florida looking for a tying touchdown. Eight-man drop here. Palmer just got the throw off, and it's incomplete. Intended for Daryl Jackson. And even with three men coming, they still got pressure. They did. They hurried the throw from Jesse Palmer. It was Jamal Reynolds who's been a consistent force up front putting the heat on. Reynolds got the pressure, but again, you can't expect the quarterback's got to think my five can block their three. Eight defenders against five receivers and no depth of field to defend with the end zone right there. As you see the pressure by Reynolds, a good defensive play by the Seminoles. Now Jeff Chandler trying to... They get three for three in field goals today, a 22-yarder. It is good. He still has not missed from inside the 40-yard line this year. So a hollow ending for Florida. They had first and goal at the one and settled for three points. I just retired with a fair amount of money in my 401k, but the problem was it was all over the place. We sat down, we discussed an enormous amount. Fan of Ricky <laughs> Martin. Friday on CBS, the international superstar. Takes New York by storm with his first ever network special, Ricky Martin, one night only. That's Friday on CBS. Bobby Bowden, well knows, and as he said earlier, no lead is ever safe in this rivalry. Chandler put all nine points on the board for Florida with three field goals, and he'll kick off Florida State. There's Jermaine Stringer and Talman Gardner back for the kickoff. The Knolls lead by four. Chandler, another excellent kickoff through the hands of Stringer and out of the back of the end zone. So Florida State will begin at the 20. Sean, let's go back to that first down and goal situation. The two receivers, one of them has to move up on the line of scrimmage. You have to have seven on the line of scrimmage. And Travis Taylor is pointing to Daryl Jackson saying, you got to move up. you got to move up. They both stayed there as the sneak was run, and then the penalty backed them up five yards. A very costly mental mistake by one of those two receivers. In that case, it looked like Daryl Jackson. And that's been a season-long problem for Florida. Chris Winky trying to get this offense going again. He handed off to Miner. And the rushing problems continue on both sides. Miner got just two. He's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Came out of the same high school that sent Warwick Dunn to Tallahassee. Catholic High School. He wore Warwick's number 28 in high school. Changed to 23 at FSU to make his own mark. And he gets the handoff again. He 
Kelsey the initial hit, and then Daryl Dixon, the true freshman, up from the free safety position to make the play. So two running plays starting at their own 20. A lot of comparisons over the years between Miner and Warwick Dunn, but we talked with Mark Brick, the offense corner, he said really they're different players. Yep. Stylistically, that ball's up for grabs and intercepted by Benny Alexander. He's going to take it in. Touchdown in the lead for Florida. A 43-yard interception return for a touchdown. Chandler just did get the extra point up and through. Florida leads for the first time in the game. It's a three-point edge for the Gators midway through the third. Sean, Chris Wanky saw all this confusion in here, and he tried to go on a quick count. He tried to get the ball snapped before Florida was ready, and he did. They were not ready for the play. But then he just kind of threw it up for grabs and underthrew it, and Alexander made the play. Great reaction by the Florida secondary, even though they weren't ready to get lined up to play defense. Alexander makes the play, and not only makes the interception, but makes the touchdown. And a huge turnaround for the Florida Gators. And this secondary, very young. They start three sophomores and a true freshman. Alexander's a sophomore, the most experienced defensive back for Florida with 17 career starts. They've done an excellent job against these talented wideouts, particularly of late. That's the second interception return for a touchdown this year for Alexander. He took one back 42 yards against Alabama for a score. When we talk about third downs, since Florida State's first drive, when they were 3-for-3, three three, they have gone 4 of 11 now for the game. And so in the third down situations, Florida has really started to take control there with their defense and no bigger play on third down than the one right there by Alexander. Steve Spurrier said at the beginning of the year, with such a young and experienced defense, we may have to score a lot of points to win games. Well, over the last five games, it's been the defense growing up in a hurry, carrying the Florida offense. I think, going back to the first play out of the locker room, Marquand Manuel's play on Peter Warren, chasing him all over the field, set the tempo for this second half for the Florida defense. Chandler with another kick into the end zone. Jermaine Stringer for a yard or two deep. Has a hole. And a good tackle made in that seam because... Had Todd Johnson not made that tackle, Stringer might have been off to the races. Tomorrow on the CBS Sports Spectacular, members of the 1999 World Cup Championship team, including Mia Hamm, square off indoors against some of the best international players in the Toys R Us Victory Tour tomorrow, 4.30 Eastern time on the